So thank you again and welcome to the uh, third Lexington Parkway phase two open house. Uh, this evening we will be presenting on our preferred layout along with results from our last round of engagement and a uh, quick overview to start here just to ground everyone in where we have been. Uh, we have a few different staff who are going to be presenting tonight and I'm going to let them introduce themselves when they begin speaking. To start the night, I'm going to pass it over to Nick Fisher, who is the project manager for Ramsey County. Nick? Hello, uh, like Tom said, I'm Nick Fisher. Um, I also have Commissioner Rafael Ortega here tonight if he wants to say hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello to everybody. Good evening. Hi. Go ahead, Nick. It's, uh, We've been to three of these in the last six days, so it's, <laughs> so yeah. it's good to see that we're getting good feedback. And thank, yeah, you yeah, everybody. Right. thank you, everybody, for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so this project's been talked about for, uh, for many years. Um, we wanted to realign Lexington. Uh, there's a school property that's between West 7th Street and Lexington that uh, came for sale. And we had the opportunity to uh, kind of realign the street. Um, so we took that, we started with phase one this year. Um, you can kind of see the map there um, where we removed the Lexington from the kind of West 7th Montreal, uh, very strange intersection there, kind of made it more perpendicular to West 7th, a lot safer. Uh, we also installed Adrian Street behind the Highland Nursery and uh, kind of made a better connection there. And then what we're talking about tonight is phase two. So kind of continuing on from our construction all the way down to Shepherd Road. So uh, basically what Elway Street right now is what we're, we'll talk about. So next slide. So where is this project located? Um, it's located kind of in between the Highland and Fort Road Federation District Council. So we kind of have both of them represented tonight. Uh, it's right by that star there, just north of Crosby Farm Park. Uh, realignment re will improve connections for local and regional travelers, so not just people in cars, but also uh, pedestrians and bikes as well. Uh, the city street, Elway Street, will be transferred to Ramsey County upon completion and then renamed Lexington Parkway, so it's uh, one uniform name down the whole thing. And then after this, I think we're going to Casey from Fort Road, if Casey's on. Yeah, hi, hey, thanks, Nick. Um, so hi everybody, I'm Casey Carmody. Uh, I'm one of the board members of the West 7th Fort Road uh, Federation and I also co-chair the uh, Transportation and Land Use Committee for the Federation. Um, happy to have everybody here. Our district council really is interested in ways to better connect parts of our neighborhood with the river. Um, and given the fact that significant portions of West 7th, uh, our district is along the Mississippi, uh, I'm really excited about this project because I think it does have the opportunity to provide better connections to the river for the West End as a whole. Um, also, as a chair of the Transportation and Land Use Committee, uh, during the past year and a half, you know, one of the consistent issues I've heard from folks in the district uh, is concerns about traffic safety. And I've had lots of discussions about how to calm traffic in the neighborhood uh, to help ensure that there's better safety for pedestrians, bicyclists, uh, and drivers. And, and many of these concerns are related to West 7th, Shepherd Road, and you know a lot of these tricky to navigate intersections we have in our neighborhood. Um, so I know the Federation is really invested in the developments and the directions of this uh, project um, to make our neighborhood safer to, tra to traverse. And, I'm pers and I personally appreciate the updates uh, made during uh, phase one of the project in the areas of West 7th and Lexington and Elway, uh, which I feel are a lot easier to navigate now. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to the conversation tonight uh, with the neighborhood uh, to hear more from the county, uh, Zan Associates, and, and then everybody here who's with us tonight to learn how the plans are progressing. Um, but first, I'm going to toss it, the, the mic over to Matt Clark uh, with the Highland District Council for a quick introduction from him. Great. Casey, uh, thank you for the handoff. Nick, thank you for your uh, continuing work on bringing all of us up to speed on the progress of this project. Given the fact that Elway will be turned over to the city, I'm wondering kind of in jest whether or not we name the post office now uh, Lexington Park Station. Uh, I, I believe that it currently is known as Elway Station. 
And uh, now that it looks like it's going to be the center of, of kind of everything, maybe it's the Lexington part. But the broader theme that we wanted to point out at Highland District Council with this connection is really how important the connection is. You'll be able to go from Shepherd Road north all the way 37 miles uh, by bike or by car uh, continuously. And we'd love it if you stay in Ramsey County for as often and as long as of that journey. But it's, not, it's important to know that that journey starts both at Fort Road and it starts in Highland. And our neighbors want it to be safer. They want it to be friendlier. They want it to be walkable. And right now, as it sits today, it's, it's none of those things. It's not safe. It's not walkable. It's not easily referable uh, when you're providing directions. And we are really excited and really appreciative to see the county's work and the city's work to make all of these connections more possible and to do it. Uh, in a way uh, that really makes sense uh, in, in naming and naming convention and usage and really pride around place uh, and Lexington Parkway. Um, uh, can't wait to see it come together. So thanks for the opportunity and look forward to hearing more, Nick. All right, thank you for the uh, big kudos there. And well, my name pass is it off to uh, Larry Poplar here. Yeah, my name is Larry Poplar. I'm work for TKDA, we're doing the engineering for this project. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the schedule and the next few slides will show kind of more detail on the schedule here. So phase one, um, we worked a bit on it last summer and then finished up in the spring. You might've seen over the last uh, um, few weeks, we were doing some corrective measures out on the project. And so, um, next slide, please. So the, the project, uh, this is a, a photograph looking up north towards uh, um, West 7th Street and on, Lex on the new Lexington um, nurseries to your right. And so, um, uh, next slide. The project put in uh, one lane in each direction for the street, um, included turn lanes at the intersection, bike lanes in each direction, um, sidewalks on both sides, and parking lanes um, and then to the north. Um, this next phase will include a connection to Montreal and um, down to Shepherd Road. And this, uh, this photograph is kind of an aerial. And so the, the green area um, at the bottom is uh, where the new road would go and connect to Montreal. And really that, that uh, next phase is really to finish that connection of Lexington Parkway to Shepherd Road, uh, make the street safer for people who walk, bike and drive, um, to reconstruct Elway, which is in horrible shape at the moment and improve the aging pavement and utilities. And with that, I'll turn it back to Tom to talk about public engagement. Thank you, Larry. So my name is Tom Holmes. I'm with uh, the project team uh, from Zan Associates. I am head of engagement on the project. And I just wanna highlight some of the work that uh, has been happening in the community, uh, not just by the project, but all of you as well. Um, so, so far we've done uh, presentations to both of the district councils, uh, West 7th Fort Road Federation and the Highland District Council. Uh, we've had a couple of open houses before this one. Uh, we've had some really great feedback on surveys and a comment map, and then have uh, done other online things. We have an ongoing website that's been uh, put in the chat a couple of times. Um, and then we've also gotten really great help from the district councils to promote this uh, project and to just support um, getting the word out about what's going on on Lexington. Um, here's a big old list of the engagement things we've done so far. Um, I want to highlight just a few things in this list. So we, we started our engagement back in uh, fall 2020 um, with a uh, couple of uh, district council meetings and then our first virtual open house where we introduced the project to people. 
Uh, we had a survey that asked about the design criteria that we would be using to uh, grade this project um, as a technical team and then asked about some priorities. And we got about 200 responses, which was a great response rate for this project. Um, and then in the spring, in March and April, had another round of district council meetings and an open house um, to share some uh, project uh, uh, examples, uh, not preferred layouts, but some example uh, layouts that we were considering. Uh, we presented those layouts uh, in an interactive map and asked for comments and got nearly 300 responses to that uh, along with a survey. So another great round of uh, engagement. And then uh, this round of engagement, so far we've been to the district councils as Commissioner Ortega uh, noted, we, we've been out to the council, uh, district councils um, a couple of times already in the past week and are at our open house at this point. So that, that's where we've been. Just wanna highlight that we've done, um, gotten a lot of feedback on this project. Uh, these design criteria are the ones that we asked people about in a survey in the first round of engagement. Um, the design criteria are shown on the screen and generally people agreed with these um, rather than reading them off. Actually, I will read them off in case we have anyone calling in. So. The design criteria that people generally agreed on were to create convenient, efficient, and safe experiences for everyone, provide pedestrian facilities that connect with the surrounding homes and businesses, provide continuous bike connections, provide, provide reliable traffic flow today and in the future, and finally to create facilities that can be easily maintained. Uh, these were proposed based on Ramsey County's uh, existing plans and policies, and then also um, taking into context this project, and people generally agreed that this is what we should use to um, consider our design uh, throughout the project. Um, in the second open house, uh, we presented some uh, layouts, and they were really asking about the one big design uh, consideration that we were thinking about. Um, how do we make the Montreal Avenue an existing Elway Street intersection that will soon be the Lexington Parkway intersection? Um, how do we design that? Uh, we shared a few different options, and this is what was shown at the second open house. Uh, one was a two-way stop at that intersection. One was a full-size roundabout, and then one was a mini roundabout. Uh, we'll go into details about these trade-offs that we we previously shared, um, but just wanted to share some of the feedback that we got. So we're not, you know, bearing the lead or anything. Um, we asked which which of those options that people prefer for that intersection, and 51% of people replied that they like the mini roundabout best. Um, they said that it makes for a safe design for all road users and doesn't take too much private land. 33% um, said they like the uh, full-size roundabout because it maintains traffic flow, um, but has significant property impacts. Uh, and then 16% of people said they like the two-way stop, uh, but were concerned about some of the safety issues. Um, and this is, uh, we, we took this into account and the technical team actually um, was leaning in the same direction as the public. and. Uh, our, our preferred layout this evening will feature a version of the mini roundabout uh, with some alterations of what we showed from the uh, last round of engagement in the spring. Uh, before we get into the uh, preferred layout this evening, uh, Kevin is going to take over and uh, share some of those trade-offs uh, to show how we got to the mini roundabout option. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I'm Kevin Patelko. I'm an engineer with TKDA, and we're, I've been uh, kind of working as a designer for the various intersection types. Um, so kind of to recap the, the various intersections that we evaluated, the first one here is our two-way stop. This would have Lexington traveling through the intersection without stopping, with Montreal being the cross street that would have stop signs. Um, there's a photo from Ford Parkway which is similar to what was evaluated with one lane in each direction, a center turn lane and on street bike lanes. Um, overall crossing distance for a pedestrian to walk across Lexington in this situation would be over 40 feet, um, which we felt was uh, would be a challenge. 
um, but this was the least expensive option. Uh, option B that we looked at was a roundabout. Um, the picture there is a full-size roundabout with a large raised median. Uh, there'd be about one lane in each direction. And um, as it approaches the roundabout, roundabout with a single lane that would circulate kind of through the middle, all the vehicles would have to slow down as they approach the roundabout, which provides a traffic calming effect. And uh, the continuously circulating traffic would improve the traffic flow. So roundabouts have historically reduced the frequency of severe crashes. Uh, for pedestrians, there was a raised median separating them from the vehicles. And off on the side, there's multi-use trail for bikes and pedestrians. Um, this option that was the largest that was being proposed with the largest property impacts and the highest cost. Um, the third option that we evaluated was a mini roundabout. Um, this is sort of a blend of the previous full-size roundabout and the small neighborhood traffic circles that uh, are available in a couple places in St. Paul um, along Jefferson and uh, Davern has one. Jefferson and Duke, I believe, has one. There's a few of these in small neighborhoods. But the, the mini roundabout is a little different in that it has a slightly raised center to provide a delineation for the drivers while a larger vehicle like a truck, bus, or emergency vehicle would be able to drive over it as they go through the intersection. There's still a single approach lane in each direction and then one lane that circulates through the circle. Um, it will provide the similar traffic calming effect and reduction of the severe crashes as the full size roundabout, uh, but on a smaller footprint. There's a, a smaller median available for pedestrians crossing and uh, still multi-use trails on both sides of the road. And overall, the pedestrian crossing distances are the shortest in this option. So taking the mini roundabout that we selected, we can flip over to kind of the project layout that incorporates <clears throat> that incorporates that mini roundabout that we selected in the design. Um, so if you start on the north end, looking at the phase, you can see the phase one construction up at Adrian Street. This project would kind of completes that intersection with Adrian Street. Um, which stays as a one-way traffic, um, one-way one -way street on Adrian Street with westbound traffic only. And then the new road will move to the south. Um, prior to the roundabout, there would be an exit and entrance ramps for bikes to give them the ability to move off the road and onto the multi-use trail and avoid uh, riding through the roundabout. Um, you can see the center circle there in the middle. That uh, That is the slightly raised median. It's a two inch lipped curb, which gives the drivers a delineation, but also gives the, a larger truck the ability to drive over it to make, a, make left turns. Um, so this being, uh, <clears throat> yeah, essentially just to create that delineation for drivers is the main key to the center, center island. On the west side, it transitions back into the existing Montreal faster while um, with a, some impact on parking and then also allowing bikes to transition between the road and the trails. Uh, on the east side of the road, uh, there's some property impacts and a need to reconfigure some parking in the southeast. Um, as the project kind of heads to the south, away from the roundabout, um, there's the raised median there that turns into a striped median um, with still having the 10 foot trails on both sides of the road. Um, this being now being a two lane road now, as opposed to the existing four lane, but so it's a somewhat reduction of the overall road size. As we go south, we reach the existing railroad bridge there. Uh, the road travels kind of around the piers that are supporting that railroad bridge. And we are not making any modifications to the bridge as part of this project. So we just sort of work around those piers and fit the road within it. Um, further to the south, there's uh, the access to the residential buildings that are to the west of the street, um, creating a left, a, a short left turn lane there to give them the ability to access that without stopping the northbound traffic. And then at the very south intersection, you've reached Shepherd Road. Um, we're adding pedestrian facilities to all four corners and crosswalks on all four quadrants. Um, with a new island being constructed in the northeast corner, which shortened the crossing distances while still giving larger vehicles an ability to make the right turn. And then the very south end um, is the access to Crosby Farm Park, 
which will be the same other than just some pavement re just some pavement improvements is all. So that covers uh, the design based on everything that we came up with uh, through our engagement. Uh, quickly before we move on from from this map, um, this map is now available on the project website and you are able to add comments. I just got notification that this, this is up um, as of about five minutes ago. Um, so to add comments, first, first when you enter the site, you'll get a uh, page that gives you a little overview of the project and then gives you the, these instructions that I'm about ready to say out loud. Um, you can add comments by dragging a comment from the top and placing it on the location that you're interested in commenting. And there's also a general comment form in the left hand sidebar over here. So it, uh, just a simple, what feedback do you have about the preferred design if you have a general comment? Um, I'm going to switch over now to a video that gives a little more information on the mini roundabout. Uh, please let me know if there's any issues with sound, but I think we should be up and ready to go. Ramsey County is committed to delivering innovative transportation systems that provide safety and mobility for all users. An intersection design that is growing in popularity is the mini roundabout. Mini roundabouts are similar to standard roundabouts, except the center island is paved, making it easier for larger vehicles such as trucks and buses to navigate. Mini roundabouts provide for fluid free-flowing traffic through intersections. They provide the operations and traffic control of a standard roundabout but they cost less to build and use less land. They also improve safety for pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorists by reducing speeds and creating less conflict points within the intersection. The benefits of a mini roundabout align with Ramsey County's All Abilities Transportation Plan, which places a higher priority on pedestrian and bicycle safety and access. All of these benefits are reasons why a mini roundabout was selected through public engagement for the new design Montreal and Lexington Parkway intersection. While many roundabouts have been built across Minnesota, the intersection at Montreal and Lexington will be St. Paul's first roundabout. Within the roundabout, traffic travels in a counterclockwise direction around the center island. Vehicles must slow down and yield to traffic within the roundabout before entering. Longer vehicles like trucks use the drivable paved center island to make turns within the intersection. Pedestrians cross the intersection at dedicated crosswalk areas. Median refuge areas are provided to allow pedestrians to cross traffic from one direction at a time. Bicyclists entering the roundabout are provided dedicated ramps to connect to the multi-use trail. This intersection design will serve all forms of traffic and all abilities for years to come. For more information and to subscribe to project updates, visit ramseycounty.us slash Lexington extension. Great. So flip through here. Uh, on the screen are the uh, is the contact information for uh, the project. Uh, that video along with the comment map are now available online, and uh, we are uh, open for comments. If you want to take some of that information back and think about it. Uh, but at this time, I'd like to uh, open it up for live uh, comments and questions. Um, we are uh, available to answer questions either in the chat or uh, verbally. So to um, ask a question out loud, you can uh, raise your hand, which unlike what the screen is showing, I'm, I'm sorry for the confusion, you can go to participants and there's a raise your hand function there. Uh, and then we'll call on you and you, you can uh, unmute yourself. Uh, you can also ask a question in the chat as well if you have, have anything. Um, so I, I would like to open it up to questions. I will flip back over to the uh, layout here so that we can have that pulled up.
anyone is having issues with the raise your hand function, um, also feel free to unmute yourself. I think we might need to, to make some adjustments on the fly here since uh, oh. settings were not set up by the engagement person, me, correctly. Tom. I yes. Think, I think Edward has his hand up. Tom, a question? Yes, please uh, go ahead. Could you just describe a little bit how the trail will function and the crossing at Shepherd Road? Will there be markings on the trail or will it be uh, un unmarked and just uh, how wide it will be for people? Nick, do you want to answer that first question about the trails? Yep. Um, the crossing will be marked. So it'll have, if there's a, if you remember the picture of it, it has like the crosswalk blocks, like a normal marking, and it'll be the same. It'll be the same width pretty much today as it is, you know, after we're done here. Um, there is a that small island uh, kind of if you're heading uh, westbound that will help, you know, aid across the street um, if you're on the, the east side of the trail. Um, but it will have a crosswalk blocks there. And we'll also, we're looking at uh, adding a leading pedestrian interval. Um, so if you push the button, um, there will be a few seconds where you get to go ahead and walk while everyone else is all red. So the, the cars can see that you're entering the intersection. Uh, we're still working on the design of that, but that's uh, more than likely something we could put in. Apologize, I'm uh, having some issues seeing my participant list pull up here. Um, Nick or Larry, if you see a raised hand, could you call on people for the time being? Uh, there is a question in the chat. Uh, please address the loss of land green space for Montreal high rise. Also same issue for homeowner on the west side of the area. So with a, a, round, a mini roundabout, there is a little bigger than the intersection that is there now. Uh, we are working with each homeowner owner, uh, to compensate them for, for loss of uh, property and then also access uh, to their property um, before, during, and after the project. Um, so we're working with each individual property owner and we get uh, appraisals on the property and compensate them uh, for any loss of, of land. Ed, you got another question? Yeah, do you want to just tell people when you think you'll really know a little bit more about the actual construction timing and uh, process? Um, so right now we're about 60% plans in there. Um, so, you know, a little roughly halfway through. Um, we're working on a construction phasing plan, like you said, and then we'll meet with the individual property owners um, to kind of go over it. It'll probably be, I'd say probably after the first of the year, um, not much gets a lot, it's a lot of tough stuff to get meetings in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, so we'll probably meet with property owners then and then kind of talk about access during construction and phasing and making sure people can get in and out. Uh, there's a question in the chat. How will potentially large amount of snow removal be dealt with to avoid buildup on private property? Uh, the trail will have to be plowed and um, um, by, by the agency. And then with that maintenance, there's always some, I mean, we all know big snow events, all of a sudden you can't see around the corner and then a big front end loader will have to come in and, and move the, the snow around. What's nice about Elway is there's, you know, some parts over well of 100 feet of right of way. So at least there's somewhere to push the snow to if it gets to be too much.
Nick, maybe I can ask a question that, that we've heard several times at other, other meetings. Um, the name change, uh, what is that going to look like? Um, how, how does that happen between the county and city? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. Um, uh, right now it's named Elway. Uh, it will be changed to Lexington Parkway. Um, the city has a procedure for, for doing this. Um, I kind of went through this on Lexington to old Lexington over there to notify homeowners, notify the mail, UPS, um, and everything basically just kind of make sure it's even updated on Google Maps. Uh, so we're working with the city on, on that process and uh, there'll be more to come. If you're in that name change, we'll, we'll reach out to you. So, sounds like we're kind of slowing down on questions. And anyone else have anything? Or else we're going to end this meeting very early. Yes, I just have a question, Tom, here and uh, for everybody. So, you know, after this, kind of what are the, the next steps? What are the additional engagement that you're planning on, on carrying out? And when can we expect to kind of hear some further updates from all of you? So from here on out, most, most of our engagement will be on our website. Um, we do sometimes have a construction phasing meeting. But considering there isn't, um, you know, 100 homes along here, there's kind of some high-rise apartments that have uh, um, kind of a, pro a, a building manager we can deal with. Um, I think it's more appropriate to kind of each go individually to each one. And then as far as broad, big project phasing, so when the road will be closed, how will it be detoured, uh, what will be closed when, uh, all that will be updated on our website. Uh, please sign up for uh, website updates. They'll just email you what's going on when, and I think that's the best way to do it. It's a good question, Casey. We have a, a couple of new arrivals. Uh, just letting people know um, we are putting the uh, website in the chat, uh, and that includes the uh, comment map that shows the preferred layout, uh, which you can add your comments to in the coming month, um, has the mini roundabout video that we shared tonight. And then also uh, we'll have this recorded presentation that we are doing right now. We'll post that uh, in the coming days here. Any other questions or comments? All right, well, thank you for coming. And uh, like Tom said, uh, the link is at the bottom in our chat. And if you have anything else that you think of later tonight, you can always send us an email. Nick. Thank you. There you go. Hello. Hello. We can hear you, Commissioner. I just wanted to say thank you to you, Nick, and the, st the rest of the staff. Uh, you guys have done a good job uh, connecting with the community and getting their input and their participation. I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Yep, thank you for the kudos. All right, everyone. Uh, we appreciate the time this evening. Uh, hopefully you find something else to do with your, your uh, extra time not spent at the Lexington Parkway open house. Hopefully you got all the information you needed, but we'll be available uh, through contact information and those other avenues on the comment map um, and the uh, comment form that we pointed out today. Have a good evening.